Welcome back everybody to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're happy that you're back to continue to support you on your journey towards success. Some of you may be tuning in because you are getting ready for the CNE. We want to applaud you for taking a critical next step on your path to success. We believe here at Dr. Sellers Educate and it is our mission to support every single nurse educator to achieve success on the NLN CNE exam. That includes the CNE novice and the CNE clinical exam as well. If that is not part of your plan and you are just here to learn how to be a better nurse educator, we are help, happy to welcome you to our channel as well. All right, so go ahead and pull out your resource. We're gonna be using primarily Billings and Halstead Teaching and Nursing 6th Edition. And the second step you wanna take is to print out your study worksheet. Now, even if you're not on the journey towards c &E, it's still really important that you maximize your time that you are here by focusing on content that we will be reviewing together. Okay, so in this snapshot, we're focusing on three tips to know about Bloom's taxonomy, taking a look at both horizontal and vertical alignment. And we first wanna take a look at our thought provoking question. Linear congruence helps to align courses and content throughout the nursing program, which best describes the role of curriculum mapping. We have A, provides details about each course, B, demonstrates relationship of assignments, C, visual representation of all courses and concepts, or D, evaluates entry-level skills of students. All right, so think about that thought-provoking question as we move forward in our content review for this snapshot. The content we're reviewing is most closely aligned at the level of application. All right, so there are about three different competencies or domains that we are expanding your knowledge as it relates to this topic. Okay, so when you think about application, we often think about the ability for students to really validate that they have learned a skill. Okay, and when you look at figure 27.2, page 527 in Billings and Halstead, this is where you're gonna see a great depiction of the learning wheel. And we know it's a lot of information, okay, but don't let that learning wheel overwhelm you. It is great information that will help you solidify full comprehension of the Bloom's taxonomy, okay? I want you to make sure you do is take a, make a note, if you haven't already, about um, the learning wheel again on page 527. So horizontal and vertical alignment. We want to make sure that we have both when it comes to our nursing curriculum. First, starting with vertical. It is a scaffolding process. We build on curricular content elements and we often ask the question, what are those entry skills and content that a student should have when they leave our course? All right, and if we're not sure about what those specific skills are, then we should look back at our learning objectives. Right? We should be mapping our content that we're discussing with our students that we are collaborating with our clinical faculty and skills and sim lab faculty about, we should ensure that it is mapped back to our learning objectives and that students are able to achieve the learning that we expect them to. And that's going to help us again, better align with our curriculum and make sure that those skills have been completed. Next, we wanna take a look at horizontal alignment. All right, so look at linear congruence. We are evaluating the concurrent courses in each semester. We're thinking about how students are progressing with the concepts that they are comprehending. We would expect that as students progress into level two, level three, that they have a, a stronger foundation of knowledge and they, they are able to comprehend and most importantly, apply these concepts of under, that they now understand in more complex situations in the clinical setting. As an example, some nursing programs have med surge one and two, some even have med surge three. Well, we would expect that students in a med, the student that is in a med surge two course to have a higher skill level than when they were in a foundations course in semester one. Okay, so when we think about horizontal alignment, we wanna make sure knowledge in order to build on the skills that we need them to have in order to validate that they are comprehending the concepts once they get to the level two or level three courses. Okay, so that's horizontal and vertical alignment with the curriculum. 
We also factor in the Bloom's taxonomy component. So figure 27.2, page 527. Take a look at application. Look at those verbs associated with application. Look at what those student deliverables or tools are. We want to ensure that students are able to pull the puzzle pieces together. For now, how to work equipment. A key step in the process is that we as clinical faculty understand how to work equipment. We understand what the level of care is on that specific unit before our students arrive. That's going to help enrich the learning experiences that our students are having in the clinical setting. Okay, so for our thought-provoking question, if you chose C, you are correct. Visual representation of all courses and concepts. If that's a muddy point for you, we don't want you to feel bad about it. That is why you tune into Dr. Sellers Educate so you can have better comprehension of concepts. Page 527 in Billings and Halstead will give you additional context to help you fully understand each of these concepts if you're still unclear about how they all fit together. Okay, so we started out with the question, what are those three key tips when, it look, when we look at horizontal and vertical alignment in Bloom's taxonomy? Number one is to understand the definition of vertical alignment and how it aligns with Bloom's taxonomy and the learning objectives and program outcomes. Number two is to understand horizontal alignment, how they are different, and what are those key elements that we want to consider on that Bloom's learning wheel. And then third, when we look at the Bloom's learning wheel, figure 27.2, what are those specific verbs? What are those student deliverables? And what are those technology tools that we can use to align and map back to the learning objectives that we expect our students to be able to achieve? We hope this snapshot has been helpful. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Info at Dr. Sellers Educate. Make sure you check out our website. We have lots of new programs and services that are available to help you on your journey. Until next time, we hope you all have a great one. Take care.